What we have here today is something extremely special, something that you're not going to find on any other channel on YouTube. With me is the 2023 Maverick Hybrid XL and the 2023 Maverick XLT Tremor with the EcoBoost engine. What we're going to find out today is which one of these is for you. Stay tuned. So leading off with the 2023 XLT with the Tremor package. What you get here is the 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine producing 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, and you get a heck of a lot more with it. So first off, let's get it here and look at the styling. So what they did is they smoked out the, the headlights. They did not put full LEDs. It's like a mixture of the halogen, which is kind of a, a miss in my opinion. But one of the most uh, beneficial things that sets this trimmer apart from all the other trims is what they did to this front bumper here. So you can see the uh, orange accents and the tow hooks and all that good stuff, but they actually cut out and formed this bumper to give a far better approach angle and uh, the approach is actually uh, 30.1 inches approach angle which is amazing that's like getting into jeep territory so paired up uh, really great looking you know uh, fog lights there and the styling on the bumper is just super tasteful they did uh, integrate the front uh, insert here which kind of shows that you got the trimmer, right? And if you can bring it in a little bit closer, I'll show you this special thing. They blacked out the Ford badge. And I think that that just looks really awesome. Because it would, if it was blue on this Atlas Blue, might, uh, yeah, not look that great, right? And uh, looking up at the hood, I think the, uh, the lines that they did, you know, th this is standard across all the Mavericks but it really really pops with these color combination here with the atlas blue and the kind of gold orange you know accents so we'll uh take it back down the side here you know typical maverick body but uh, they did integrate that trimmer color into the xlt badge you are paired up with some Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. And let me tell you, these are awesome. A couple of other folks have tested them off-road. I haven't been lucky enough to take it off-road just yet. And they integrated the uh, one individual, um, I guess, cutout into the, the wheel well there is uh, the trimmer styling. I think it looks great. Again, with the blacked out badging with the Ford emblem there. Super cool, you know, it's, uh, it really sets it apart. Around the, uh, the back here, again, you know, really tasteful cutout. The cool thing about the Tremor is what's in the rear end here. So what you have is an independent rear suspension that is the same as what you would get in the Bronco Sport Badlands Edition. And it consists of a dual clutch uh, set up there to where you basically have a rear locking differential. It doesn't have the traditional locking pin, but it will pretty much basically lock both wheels and you can test this out, get it up in the air, and you'll see it's, it's going to perform exactly like, you know, a true rear locker like what you would get in the Ranger Tremor or, you know, various other uh, mid-sized trucks. One of the other cool things is this Tremor decal right there. If you look at this closely though, I do think that they could have done a bit better of a job. When you get up close, it does look a little uh, cheap and chintzy. But from afar, I mean, that, that's all that really matters, I guess, is, is that's what people are going to see, right? But, you know, when, when you spend your hard-earned money on this, yeah, you may, you may want something a little better quality. You do have a factory lift of one inch, and that is going to give you a total of 9.4 inches of ground clearance, which is really awesome for any type of pickup. So again, a really great setup, a super compelling case, and I would like to know, you know, how it stands up to this hybrid.
and, and the base XL. So let's get into that one. Now for the contrast here, we have the hybrid XL trim. What you get with this is a 2.5 liter uh, hybrid engine paired to a CVT transmission producing 191 horsepower. And forgive me, the torque figure has slipped my mind. I will put it up on the screen. So uh, start with the styling, right? This is ultra basic. I purposely got this spec just because this is essentially the uh, most kind of fleet vehicle-esque thing that you could buy. So it's got the traditional steelies. It does have a Continental Street tire, which is actually a really good road tire. So if you come around the front and you can really kind of see the difference between this two, this is just a, you know, a matte black, kind of the same as what you get in your body panels there with the, uh, the cladding and all of that good stuff. You've got the traditional Ford badge, which I think actually looks really good, paired with this white and, you know, halogen lights, you know, ultra basic. It doesn't have any uh, fog lights down, down below. You have the cheapest uh, rear view, uh, rear side mirrors that you could find, in my opinion. I, I don't know where they found these things, but they're absolute trash. Um, and then, you know, the blacked out XL badging. Going around the styling, it is similar, but it does look a bit more defined in this white. So I do really like the cutout that they did along the side to really give this character. And apparently it was, you know, for aerodynamic purposes, right? Because the fuel economy numbers in this that I'll get into in a second are absolutely staggering. So mention, you do get uh, roughly about eight inches of ground clearance with this. You know, it's, it's the torsion beam rear end. So it does not have any of the advanced features of the tremor package but it does provide a very damped ride. The ride quality is very good. I'll post that up in another video when I compare kind of driving impressions of these two. I do like the design of this, and, and I do actually think that this uh, red and you know the combination of the chrome on the white looks really, really tasteful. I think it pops really well. I have a four and a half foot bed some, you know, cubbies here that you can take out, but I don't know why you would ever want to do that. But you can scan these codes and it's got a bunch of tips and tricks of utility uses of this bed. You can do all sorts of funky things. I haven't really had time to get into, you know, what the uh, possibilities are, but apparently it's endless. So coming around the side here, again, you know, uh, the good thing is, is that does have a protected uh, body here. So when you're throwing stuff in the, you know, uh, bed, you're not going to dent everything up. Like you take a look at my Ford Ranger and it's literally just covered in dents of people, you know, throwing stuff in and out of the bed. So you're protected in that instance. Very small uh, rear window. That, I get it, you know, with the, the styling of the body and, and all of that stuff, there's only so much you can do. And, and when you have the rear window uh, sliding glass option, it is so tiny that I, I don't even know why anybody would pay any money for that. So I, again, opted to, to not have that. All right, so let's get into the interior. So what you have here is cloth seats throughout, very, you know, durable spec. You got hard plastics on the door panel here that, I, I mean, you could spray this down with a hose and nothing's really gonna happen, which is pretty great. So hard plastics there. It is kind of a softer cloth material right here for your elbow. Not exactly super comfortable. Uh, really standard kind of parts bin, you know, controls here. So you do have everything. It is one touch up and down, which is pretty great to get that into the base trim. Over here on the display, you do have some, some options. So you have your uh, rear bed light. You've got your fuel uh, gauge button there, whatever, or, I'm sorry, fuel opening and closing button. All of your different light options. And then this is actually a uh, towing light, so you can kind of change up and down. So if you're towing something, you're not gonna blind people going down the road. 
getting on over to probably one of the worst steering wheels in the industry. But uh, that said, you know, you have all of the standard functions and features. All right, so what we have in the interior here is your standard eight inch display. This thing is full of really great storage. So you have the, you know, little cubby there. You can put change, you can put your keys, phones, etc. right? You know, fingers if you cut people's fingers off. And uh, volume knobs, physical controls, which is great, right? Little climate control or anything like that. But I can tell you that this is very responsive. It works quite well and, and it heats and cools the cabin, you know, probably one of the best in the business, honestly. Now to the door panel, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I do like Joe Rady. I think he's great. He's obviously a lot better at this than I am. So uh, down here, you do have your uh, like six by nine inch speakers. The stereo system in the Maverick could use a lot of work in my opinion. So yeah, if you bring it on in there, this I heard does get a little rattly from time to time and you do have all of your cutouts with the bottles and everything like that so i'll put one in there for you I'll try to get the logo out of that so that's about all you're going to fit you could maybe fit something a little bit taller and then it does have this but what it does is kind of slides back like that so your stuff's going to be sort of jostling around so i don't i don't really know what the purpose with this was they try to claim that you can put a bigger bottle in it, but you really can't. I've tried to put like Yeti mugs and coffee mugs and stuff in there and pretty much none of them fit. So, all right. So around back here, you've got a ton of space and this is actually a very comfortable back seat. So I'm, you know, five foot eight. That's my normal seating position. If you're a few inches taller than me, you're going to be totally fine. And if you look at the sheer amount of headroom that you have in here, I don't think that there's anything in the midsize or compact market that even comes close to the amount of uh, space that you get in here. Down below, uh, you do have a 12 volt charger. Don't have built in USB or USB-C, unfortunately. This is a 3D printable attachment, I guess. So you can scan those codes and, and it shows you how to 3D print a bunch of different add-ons here. But I don't know. I don't know anybody who has a 3D printer and I don't know how to even go about getting any of that stuff made. So I think that that's a bit silly or maybe I'm just not in touch with the times. You do only have one rear um, cubby back here. And in the XL trim, you do not get the armrest. So no armrest or anything. And I'll show you the difference. So we're going to lift this up here with your storage. So because you have the hybrid battery pack in here, you do lose quite a bit of storage in there. So this is my uh, dog cover, right? So that just kind of gives you an idea of how much you get in there. It's actually quite a bit. And again, the attachments for the 3D printed options, that's where you scan it. It'll tell you kind of everything that you can make there. I'll get to that at one point. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, not bad. I mean, you could, you could put everything you need down in there, jumper cables, etc. So pretty good, pretty good amount of storage. One of the crappiest and most cost cutting things that I think that they've done is look at that. I mean, how absurd is that? Holy shit. And it is like that across all trims. So, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't put some material back there. But, I mean, I, I get it. Maybe it's a little bit more workable or something like that. But that's going to impact your, your, you know, road noise, sound deadening. And I can tell you when you, uh, yeah, see, all right, I, I got to mess with that later on. <laughs> all right, it's finally closed. All right, so... I can tell you when you are going down and you come to like a hard stop or something like that, this thing jerks back and forth. Really annoying. So, all right, so we are in the tremor now. So this is the XLT trim, a little bit more premium, but not the top of the line. One of the things that uh, Ford does give you in every trimmer package now is, uh, this is technically an option, but they seem to be throwing it into all of them is the upgraded floor mats you know they say maverick on that i thought it would be a little bit cooler if they said tremor 
These seats are far better than what you get in the Hybrid XL. You can see it's got the orange accents and best of all, it has that sweet trimmer logo to let you know you do have a trimmer. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, let's get into some of the features that you get. So I'm... All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start this up here. You can uh, get a listen to that, that sweet engine. So uh, coming in here, yes, I know it's a jar, right? They do give you a ton of, look, I mean, look at that, like all the warning displays like that you could ever imagine, right? So what you have down here, the cool part is, is you do have your uh, tremor modes. So I'm going to select that. So if you can film up on the screen, so you get normal tow haul mode, slippery, mud and ruts, sand, and then back to normal. The, the miss, in my opinion, is you don't get a sport mode or an eco mode. So that, that's a bit of a downside. But beyond that, really, there's not a whole lot different that you get really in, in this as opposed to the XL. The only thing is, is you do have uh, adjustable uh, side mirrors. And, and that's, that's roughly you know about it i know there's a couple other gimmicky things that you get you know so the cool thing is you do have four-wheel drive and this is that rear locking function and then here is your trail mode so this is basically off-road cruise control it takes care of everything for you you just put it in that and and you're good to go all right folks so there you have it you have the complete and utter opposite ends of the spectrum. You've got one hybrid, one EcoBoost, one economy, one off-roader. So I guess what you need to find out is what are your priorities? You know, what do you need? Styling-wise, I, I cannot tell you. When you see this in person, it looks so much better than this it's it's mind-blowing you know it it makes me forget all of the amazing things that this hybrid offers you look at that and you're just like wow that is the uh the real deal sex appeal right where you look at this and this is kind of not terrible but in comparison to that it's almost like a frumpy old couch or something right now you got to think about your pocketbooks though this is almost $9,000 more than what you get for that. And the fuel economy numbers, this is 42 miles in the city and 33 on the highway. It's roughly about 37 combined. I've had this for a good little while now and I've observed almost uh, overall 39 miles per gallon, which is such a liberating feeling, right? You can get on this and hammer down and you're still gonna get 40 miles per gallon. It's, it's crazy. So that is a huge, huge advantage of the hybrid. And of course, you know, the initial costs, right? But over here, you have so much more power. You have such a uh, more exciting driving experience. It does get relatively good fuel economy on the highway. It's kind of in the city where it suffers a bit. It's only getting around 20 miles per gallon in the city. But when you get this out on the highway, you're, you're getting upwards to 28, 29 miles a gallon. I know the EPA said 24, but that's absolutely incorrect unless, you know, the dash is really lying to you. You're gonna be okay if you do a lot of highway driving and you get all the fun goodies with this. You get a beautiful truck with, you know, kind of a nicer interior and it's just a bit of a better place to be. But this decision has got to be one of the toughest ones that you could kind of ever make. And I don't know yet. These are both of my trucks. So, uh, yeah, spoiler alert, right? I own both of these and I'm sure you're thinking, wow, what a jagoff. 
And you would be absolutely right, because I know that there are so many people waiting for these, but I knew that nobody else on the internet was gonna give you kind of the opposite ends. Nobody was gonna measure these two against each other, so I actually went out and I purchased both of them kind of solely to do that. And I wanted to compare and put them through everything, and that's what I'm gonna do. And then at the end of all this, I'll make my decision on which one I'm gonna keep. So what I would like to know in the comments below, which one of these would you take if you had the choice? All right, stay tuned to the channel.